This is Mining Scout on tour at the 2017 Diggers and Dealers Mining Forum in Kalgoorlie, Australia. I'm here today with Mr Richard Bevan from Cassini Resources, which is a company listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Welcome Richard. Great, thanks Tony. <coughs> Richard, would you mind just starting by introducing first of all yourself and the company and just give us a, a brief snapshot of the company and uh, what the company's been doing. Yeah, so my name's Richard Bevan, I'm the Managing Director <clears throat> and our founding managing director, we listed uh, Cassini Resources in 2012 on the ASX. Uh, we're primarily an explorer and developer in the base metal space. So the company uh, consists of myself and my background is really uh, out of uh, managing and running a bunch of uh, 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 industrial companies but also in resources in the last five or six years. Our chairman is uh, Mike Young. Mike is uh, a geologist who's well known in Australia for bringing BCI iron through to production, uh, from exploration to production in four years. Um, and we have a board with some very good technical people. Dr John Ronsky, who headed up Western Mining's global exploration team for a number of years. So we're a, we're a small explorer, but we've got um, very good skills in corporate management and also uh, technical expertise in exploration and geology. Yeah, that's brilliant. It, it sounds like a very good team you've got yeah, there. Yeah, it's a good team. Um, would you mind just elaborating on the share structure of Cassini? Yeah. And particularly some of the bigger shareholders? Yeah, so Cassini, we've got uh, about 276 million shares on issue. Um, our biggest shareholders are uh, Macca Mining Services, or a mining services company in Australia, uh, and also GR Engineering, who are a uh, process engineering company. Uh, they came onto the register about uh, two years ago on the basis of the project, that they wanted to be involved uh, with the project going forward, so they've been great shareholders. Probably the next largest segment of shareholders are directors and management, so they tend to, that we own uh, just under 4% of uh, the company. Richard, could you just elaborate for us please on some of the strategies that Cassini has, and particularly the board, in, in developing the projects and taking those projects into production please? Yeah, um, Cassini, our primary project is a very large uh, nickel and copper sulphide project. And really that underpins our medium to longer term strategy. So currently uh, it's a project that's in development stage where we have a uh, large uh, Australian copper producer funding in. So uh, the, really the medium to longer term strategy on that is to take that project through development and own 30% in the end of a, a producing asset to provide money for dividends for shareholders but also funds for exploration. Mm. Uh, the other uh, strategy we have is a more short-term strategy around sort of exploration opportunity. Apart from the West Musgrave project, which does have a number of exploration opportunities, we've got some other greenfield exploration projects in gold and zinc uh, that in the short term we can add some value to in our own right. Great, okay. And Richard, the uh, infrastructure around some of the projects there, um, is the infrastructure pretty good or is it quite remote? Yeah, the project is quite remote. Um, it's a simple project technically. So uh, for us, we would be providing our own power and, uh, and, and producing a concentrate on site and mm -hmm. trucking that concentrate out through an existing road. So we don't need to build uh, significant infrastructure, but um, the project, I guess, the, 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 the location of the project really has an impact on the economics. And we've now done enough work to know that uh, the location is really not material to the to the project. Could you mind uh, elaborating on um, some of the the milestones that Cassini has set for itself to reach production? Yep. And uh, and the time frame for those milestones, please. Yeah, the milestones for the project are probably dictated around the joint venture agreement we have with Oz Minerals. So it's a three-stage uh, joint venture with them earning equity uh, into the project mm -hmm. at various points. So currently we're at the first stage of that, which is the scoping stage. Uh, that really has been uh, where Oz Minerals have contributed $3 million and primarily it's been around metallurgy and, and revisiting some of the engineering and processing studies. The key uh, for this stage has really been to determine what's the optimal size of the project. Um, the next phase re we enter is the PFS phase, so, so that's where Oz are spending uh, about $15 million on the project plus $4 million on regional exploration, and that will occur during an 18-month period. Mm -hmm. So we would see that that should start uh, during quarter four this year, probably sort of later in November, and run for 18 months. At the end of that milestone, they earn their 51%, and then the final stage is a DFS stage, so there's a further $10 million to the study work, 
plus another four on regional exploration. So that whole time frame is, is really mapping out to get to a funding decision on the project probably sort of two and a half years from now. Yep, that's a reasonable time frame yeah. for that size of project. Yeah, yeah very good. And uh, as far as funding is concerned, uh, what would be the main strategies as far as ongoing funding for the exploration and yeah. then of course with the development costs? Yeah, so we're, uh, Cassini, on the development front, Cassini are free carry through to that uh, decision to mine. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all being funded by Oz. Um, with respect to uh, funding the company's other activities, um, we would tend to, we, you know, in the past we've tended to do that through uh, sort of the equity markets. Um, really, the, the, one of the benefits of running, the, of running the study work as part of the joint venture is it keeps our uh, cash requirement low from an overhead basis. We get uh, some recoupment through the joint venture. So for us going forwards, the money that we spend is really determined around how much exploration we do in our own right on our other projects, yep. which we intend to do. So that's, that's really probably the, the requirement for capital. But apart from that, uh, our, the capital requirement's relatively low. Yeah, it's a great position to be in with those joint venture partners. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just in a nutshell, Richard, uh, three to five years from now, where do you see Cassini and uh, what can investors uh, look forward to in that time frame? Yeah, I would hope in three to five years, we're, we're in, you know, at the minimum of that three years, we'd be in construction. Yeah. And in five years, we'd be a, a producer and we'd be owning 30% of a um, you know, a significant nickel and copper project in Australia. Mm. Um, I think that gives us, uh, you know, the, the opportunity then to, to fulfil that value creation strategy of, of uh, you know, rewarding shareholders through dividends, but also funding our growth going forwards without continually going back to the market. Mm. And do you see this as a, a time, uh, a good time for European investors to get involved at this early stage? Absolutely. I, you know, I think it's a great time for any investor. Um, but I think there's a number of things that make this good, uh, a good time. Firstly, uh, the project is a really large scale nickel and copper project. There are very few of those at development stage around the world. It's in an excellent jurisdiction. Western Australia always ranks highly in the Fraser Institute. It's a safe environment. It's in our backyard. We know it well. I think the other key thing is that uh, as the nickel price has been subdued for the last couple of years, it's a great time to be developing. Yep, so, you know, there's a lot of projects that are requiring a higher price nickel market to fund the development. We've now secured that through our joint venture partner. And the, the intention is really to develop during this, low, this period of lower commodity price and, and really position ourselves well for the next price rise in the, in the nickel price cycle. That's no, a good time. Yeah. Well. yeah. Uh, Richard, the uh, nickel market outlook, uh, can you elaborate just uh, in very general terms, the, uh, yeah. the short to medium and then the longer term nickel outlook? Yeah, look, I think we're very optimistic about the nickel market in the medium to longer term. Mm. Um, there's going to be new demand come online through the uh, electric vehicle and renewables market, of which nickel is a significant component in many of those um, aspects. Mm. We've seen some supply side challenges um, with what's going on in the Philippines and Indonesia with the nickel pig iron. Um, and there's also a dearth of uh, projects, especially of our scale and, and, and for our style. Um, we see that uh, really the fundamentals around uh, nickel price in the medium to the longer term are strong. In the short term, it's, it's a very volatile commodity. Um, I think you know, the reality is we've developed a strategy that sort of insulates us from the short-term fluctuation by having a funding partner there. Um, but we see, uh, we've, we've, we're very positive about the outlook for both nickel and copper going forwards. Sure, and talking about uh, positive things, you've had some uh, positive news on your metallurgical test work today. Yeah, we did. We had, um, you know, in this scoping phase, a key part of that was the metallurgy. It's, it's, it's one of the areas of these types of projects that can be problematic. So best to sort it out up front. Um, and we've now shown and we've got a high level of confidence around um, the metallurgy that we can produce a saleable concentrate. We've done a, a significant amount of testing um, through a, ver a variety of different ore types and domains within the deposit that give us a high level of confidence. So for us it was a very big technical tick about the project. Um, and the other, the other key thing that w from a technical issue we've addressed in this scoping study was really the water for processing. Uh, we've confirmed now that there's enough water on tenement or on the project area that we can uh, provide uh, water to the processing. Mm. So and once again, those were the two major technical hurdles that we had coming into the scoping study and we've had positive outcomes in both of them. Yeah, brilliant. 
So. Well, uh, Richard, it looks as it sounds as though you've certainly got some uh, some high technical capability there, and uh, I know that uh, investors throughout Europe will certainly uh, look forward to to following Cassini and uh, hearing the news as it develops. Yep. And uh, in the meantime, Mining Scott wishes to thank you for joining us today, and wish you all the best in the Great. future. Thanks, David.